Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier, and thank you for stopping by. It's appreciated thoroughly. Um, it really was a pleasure hosting Christine Lagarde, the Managing Director of the IMF, uh, for what was a wonderful uh, co-hosted main speak with Vimal Shah of Kepsa. Um, we've already uploaded onto YouTube the, um, the, the footage of her speech. Um, that is on the front page of rich.co.ke and in Rich Wrap-Ups if you want to find it. And also I've uploaded uh, a, a link to her speech um, that she delivered. It really was um, an outstanding one. She really is very charming. Um, and talking about uh, a number of things started with Wangari Matai used to say, there are great opportunities even in the most difficult of moments. Um, uh, spoke about growth being around 5% in 2013, might be a tough call, um, gave a, a, a very interesting perspective on the global economic environment, um, uh, saying that the IMF will be coming out with revised forecasts for the global outlook in a few weeks. Um, the world economy is certainly in a better place now than it was five years ago at the height of the financial crisis. We are not out of the woods yet. Global recovery that is underway remains uneven and subdued, and its underlying dynamics are shifting, which they've been saying for a while now. Um, recent indicators suggest activity in advanced economies is gaining momentum, in particular in the United States. Uh, Europe slowly emerging from a deep recession. Emerging market economies are slowing following several years in which they were the main engine of global growth and a particularly important engine for Kenya and Africa. That's an interesting point. Um, momentum in emerging market economies, key factor in softening the impact of the global financial crisis on sub-Saharan Africa. So any change in emerging market economies prospects is bound to be a matter of concern, uh, she said. Outlook for sub-Saharan Africa um, in news is encouraging. Fast, second fastest growing region in the world, 5.6% on average over the past decade. Countries in Eastern Africa in particular have experienced strong growth for the last decade. Overall, we expect Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Africa to enjoy continued robust growth, which our projections in October place at 5% in 2013 and close to 6% in 2014. This outlook is not without risks, however. Um, and saying, I would like to reiterate the same message for Sub-Saharan Africa that I just gave to Kenya, there can be no complacency. Immense challenges remain. Africa can and must grow faster to address pressing social problems. Talking about an Africa a conference that the IMF will be holding in Mozambique, uh, then coming to Kenya, calling Kenya a frontier economy, impress impressive turnaround in its performance, important changes in the economic, political and social landscape. Um, Kenya has built a strong external position, is now in a favourable condition to tap international markets um, and uh, generally a very positive uh, uh, perspective. Talking about the three C's, completing fiscal devolution, closing infrastructure gaps and continuing regional integration really was an outstanding uh, uh, speech and she's really an impressive lady I must say. <coughs> I'll put up a photograph uh, of her, um, a, a photograph or two of her and I wrote a piece which I couldn't tell you about um, over the weekend because I was running around yesterday. Christine Lagarde, the IMF and Mindspeak. If Mindspeak, and I will tell you about it momentarily, was an ice cream sundae and Christine Lagarde's appearance today is like the maraschino cherry that you find on top of the Sunday. It is an absolute pleasure to be hosting the first fat female managing director of the IMF with Kepsa's Vimal Shah. It was Mohammed Suleiman who more than five years ago persuaded me to start up Mindspeak. I think our first audience was about 40 people and we started in the cinema at the Junction Mall. The philosophy behind Mindspeak was in part derived from Rumi. I had visited Konya and as I entered the Mevlana's tomb, the following was inscribed at the entrance. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. 
Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come, yet again, come, come. That timeless message of inclusion intoxicated me that evening in Konya, and I like to think that Rumi has proven a magic ingredient in the late, a magic ingredient. In the late 1990s, just before the turn of the century, when the internet bloomed for the first time, and the Nasdaq boomed, I had visited San Francisco and been to a Guy Kawasaki function. That day I learned from Mr. Kawasaki and his rules for revolutionaries that a singular rule is eat like a hummingbird and poop like an elephant. I will leave you to consider what Guy Kawasaki means as I had to consider it then. The mood in San Francisco was practically evangelical, a can-do spirit, and I wanted to replicate that. So I wish to thank Muhammad, the Mevlana, and Guy Kawasaki for this maraschino cherry Christine Lagarde moment. And the third strand is serendipity. Main speaker tipped big in 2011 when President Museveni graciously agreed to be our guest and happenstance put Miss Dr. Bezige in a hospital in Nairobi that very same weekend. That combination created a viral tsunami and main speak trended worldwide. Interestingly, it was Marshall of President Museveni's security detail who removed Mindspeak from Westgate. He took one look at the place and canned the venue. That was in 2011. So I was basically saying, uh, you know, that Christina Gard, the 11th managing director of the IMF, first woman to hold that position, seriously accomplished lady, and interestingly, a former member of the French national team for synchronized swimming, which I liked best of all. Um, she said, I'm very much looking forward to my visit. This was ahead of her visit. Do watch the video of her speech. Really very nuanced and interesting. Uh, the fun, strong, strong partnership with Kenya, one of the most dynamic economies in a region that has been a bright spot in the global economy. Um, and I finally would like to thank Bob Collymore for giving us the live feed and allowing us to broadcast over the top. Um, uh, I'll put up a link for the Twitter stream. A lot of conversation came up on social media. And uh, I'll come back to Lagarde's visit when I get down to Kenya, where the president delivered an extremely gracious speech to her last night in Mombasa after she obviously left my speak. I'm going to put up that photograph I like. I took of a, of a scene in the Savo with the water, very still water in a tree, and you can see the red soil. It really is a very wild, remote and attractive place to visit. And then I've also put up a photograph of the elephants crossing the Galana River um, that I found on uh, Christmas Day. Political reflections, Japan hits back at China with wizard comment. The diplomatic bickering between Japan and China has descended into name calling in the British press with claim and counterclaim by the country's ambassadors invoking the fictional evil wizard the Harry Potter series, Lord Voldemort. In an opinion piece published in the Daily Telegraph newspaper on Monday, Tokyo's envoy to London compared Beijing to the villain of J.K. Rowling's multi-million selling books. East Asia is now at a crossroads. There are two paths open to China. One is to seek dialogue and abide by the rule of law. The other is to play the role of Voldemort in the region. <clears throat> by letting loose the evil of an arms race and escalation of tensions, although Japan will not escalate the situation from its side. This was in response to an earlier op-ed, also invoking Voldemort, published by the paper on January the 1st by Liu Xiaoming, China's ambassador to London. And uh, clearly the, the visit to the shrine, the Yasukuni shrine, has uh, been a catalyst for deterioration relations and the sharp uptick in the uh, more aggressive lingu linguistics. Prime Minister Abe Shinzo is, in my view, the pivot uh, to Asia's point man. Foreign Minister Wang Yi begins a six-day tour of Ethiopia, Djibouti, Ghana and Senegal on Monday. And uh, I found this comment interesting. The turbulence in parts of the continent has placed Chinese investment there in risky hands. Cooperation in military and defense fields should be in line with the fast-growing economic field. And 
but uh, that's an interesting and important point, I think, the Chinese are becoming concerned about, for example, Sudan, where supplies about 5% of all their oil imports. And then in response to Wang Yi's visit to Africa, Japanese Prime Ministers to visit Africa as well. Uh, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will visit Africa and the Middle East this week, bearing development cash pledges as Tokyo pushes back against growing Chinese influence in the resource rich region. It's interesting that their competitiveness should spill out over Africa as well. Currency markets Euro 136.24, dollar index 80.75, fell for the first time in five days, ending its longest rally in two months. Japanese yen 104.48, Swiss franc 0.9056, the pound 163.90, Aussie 0.8914, and gained for the first time in 11 weeks over the five days to Jan 3rd, snapping the longest losing streak since 1982. I think it's going to go ahead lower to about 0.8250. Uh, India rupee 62.42, South Korean won uh, slipped 1% yesterday, 10.69.20 last, uh, Rial 2.3762, Egyptian pound 6.9580, that softened a little bit since the beginning of the year, dollar index, I'll put up a three month chart, and the expectations are that they're going to trim 10 billion at each Fed meeting and be done with it by the end of December, um, and I think, uh, my conclusions are that the tapers bark might turn out to have had a higher decibel level than the bite. Uh, but for now, I'm just keeping an eye on things. Euro versus dollar, 136.24. My stock remains at 133.80. And uh, just bear in mind that Europe has a better balance of payments, lack of stimulus, external demand, and tightening periphery spreads. And that was something that a fellow from UBS said. Dollar yen, 104.48. Not shock, well, not shock, maybe as we know, but Japan's monetary base. Uh, which measures the supply of money by the central bank, soared 47% in December from a year earlier to $1.85 trillion, uh, which is a very big number indeed. Um, uh, gold, last trading at 1242.50, prices climbed um, uh, to the highest level since December 16th, tumbled 28% last year, and um, I think it's overcooked here, and I like the idea of buying puts one touch $1,000 puts uh, with a strike of $1,000 of maturity of a year. Coming to Africa, South Sudan and Sudan consult on oil field force. South Sudan, South Sudan and South Sudan have begun talks to deploy a joint force to protect oil fields in the south threatened by rebels, Sudan's foreign minister said. On Monday, Sudan's foreign minister Ali Karti said Mr. Bashir and Mr. Kier were in consultations about the development of a mixed force to protect the oil fields in the south. However, neither of the presidents uh, referred to this proposal during their joint press conference. Um, this really is an extraordinary development of Sudanese forces returned to the south. I'll put up a photograph from the BBC of South Sudanese President Salva Kiir welcoming Omar al-Bashir. China, the biggest investor in South Sudan's oil industry, called on Monday for an immediate ceasefire. China's position with regard to the current situation in South Sudan is very clear, Wang told reporters in Addis Ababa. First, we call for an immediate cessation of hostilities and violence. They are the biggest investor in oil fields in South Sudan. And I think China should not count on Sudan oil for long. However, I find it interesting that President Kiir has chosen to break cover in this manner and establish himself so visibly in the Bashir China camp. Because on the other side, as I referred to when I said, you know, Sudan has become the epicenter of the U.S. and China's collision in Africa. And we're watching a 21st century high-stakes proxy war. If we are indeed watching that, then Machar seems to position himself well in the U.S. camp. The South African, uh, no, finally the uh, president of uh, Ethiopia's prime minister spokesman said this. If the Ugandans are doing what the opposition are claiming, which is active military intervention in support of any of the sides to the conflict, other than protect critical infrastructure and installations within South Sudan, then that, I believe, would be absolutely unwarranted. The South African oil shares minus 0.75% for this year. Dollar versus Rand, which broke down sharply, um, last trading at 10.6495. Uh, the rand actually traded as low as uh, t um, 1076 on January the 3rd, 
but Moody's came out and said that the nation's debt levels are manageable, and that was uh, a trigger, a catalyst for a bit of short covering, but the key level in the round is 10.55, I think it's going to 11. The Egyptian pound, as I said, 6.9588, a little bit softer of late. The Egyptian stock market up 0.27% this year, and at uh, 36 month highs, Nigerian all share up 0.43% this year, Ghana Stock Exchange up 0.67% this year. There were some unconformed reports that the Zimbabwean leader, Robert Mugabe, who will turn 90 next month, had collapsed in Harare. Zanu PF are saying is very much alive. Citadel, interesting article here, investing at the dawn of the African century um, and uh, giving a, a rationale behind Citadel's investments in particular into RVR, the railway company, and very interesting uh, hardcore data about transport prices and so forth in that report, which is linked on the front page of the site, well, on the on Rich Um According to the Business Daily, um, we are recommending that we request the IMF for significant access to a blend of precautionary facility to help cushion us against unexpected external and internal shocks that Kenya remains vulnerable to. This is Mr. Rotich, apparently, in a note to the President. This is Business Daily. Um, and uh, uh, then I saw that the President had made a speech um, in Mombasa when he received Christine Lagarde, and this is up on script, but also on rich wrap-ups, where he said, um, Madame uh, MD, uh, your visit accords us the opportunity to initiate discussions on a much more enhanced partnership in the coming months. Um, help us trans uh, s smoothly transit in a global economy that is becoming increasingly bumpy. My country needs an insurance-style facility that can be accessed as and when needed with sufficient resources to effectively deal with potential shocks, he said. And then it's referring to a legendary interest in roses. Um, very gracious, I must say. Um, your style is one your accolades among your peers, and she is very stylish. Calm, cool, persistent, inclusive, and considerate. Um, calm heads, partners like yourself, we need to take uh, decisions to fuel our future prosperity. It's a very good speech, and obviously looking for some additional facility. Kenya Shilling was last trading at 86.998, and I think that sort of uh, drawdown this year is more a consequence of a, a dollar being quite strong. The Nairobi All Shares up 1.35% this year. It had a very strong session yesterday. Safaricom closing at 11, I believe. A number of other shares just off record highs. The NSE 20 is up 0.27% this year. And I said at the beginning of the year that I expected you know, quite a bit of cash to come in into frontier indices in the first month of January. There's something called January effect of the stock market, which unlike individuals tends to bounce in January. Individuals, of course, tend to count the January. Blues. Once again, uh, thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope you get a chance to listen to Christine's presentation, uh, which is linked on Rich Wrap Ups and on the front. It really was very, very good. And uh, finally, wishing you a great year, great week.